Today is a teardown of the new O3 ear unit from DJI. In this video, we're going to lift the lid. I'm going to walk you through what's inside. Then we're going to take a closer look at the boards, put some images up on the screen and explain to you what the differences are between this new O3 ear unit and what we had before on the original DJI Digital FPV system. Now, just before we do this, I just want to say, if you find this video interesting, please do make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links to my Patreon in the description as well. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons from me. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without your support. Anyway, let's get on with it. I've got the ear unit out. Let's tear it down and see what's going on inside. So what we're going to do is lift the lid on the ear unit and then inside you can see we have this PCB. Now this is the top board. There are two boards in this ear unit. If we look at it this side here, this is the one with the SD card slot and then you've got the bottom board there with the USB-C port. We have our two antenna ports up here and then our camera goes to the bottom board down there. Now if I just flip it up on the side and lift it gently there is a ribbon cable that goes between the top and the bottom board. It's very similar in fact to how the Vista is actually set up with the ribbon cable joining the two boards. You can see it between there. So what I'm going to need to do now is gently unplug them and then we'll come back and get the bottom board out. Okay, so that's come off. Something to note is that this cable is actually glued on there. So you are going to need to be careful whilst you're doing that. There is glue on either corner. It won't just pop off. You're going to have to be very careful to prise it off to release this board from that connection. There is, interestingly, an unused connector here on the board at the top. We'll take a closer look at that on the screen in a minute when we look at the PCBs, but it is just interesting to note that there is one there. Next, what we'll do is we'll take the other side off the VTX or the ear unit and then get the other PCB out. Okay, so I've got the four screws out and we've removed the plate that covers the camera MIPI connection. Now we're gonna just gently here have a look. This is very similar to the connection we've got in the past. I, mean, I haven't quite tried it against the other ones yet, but we're gonna very carefully lift this connection on the side to hopefully release that MIPI connection off. There we go. I haven't counted the pins on this yet. We'll do that in a minute and we'll see if it is the same cable that DJI was using before. That will now allow us to lift this side off the VTX, or the ear unit I should say, and then that reveals the board on this side here with more heat pound compound as well as our input connection and our USB-C and what we should now be able to do is actually withdraw this board from this side. You can see that it is attached there a little so we're probably going to need to give it a bit of a push. There we go. That will withdraw it from that mid plate area. There's a bit of tape or foam here from the look of it that is holding that. We'll just give that a little bit of a lift and a tug. There we go. That releases our connection. I don't know, is that connector going to go through that gap? Yes, it will. Perfect. And then that releases our bottom board. You can see we've got the connection on that side, that SD card slot, which is interestingly on top of the can with a cable going over to the end. So that is a super interesting setup. They've been able to save space on the board by simply rather than having that directly on the PCB, mounting it on top of the shielding can and having a cable going over the top. And actually what's interesting is that is really almost in the same location as that connection over there on that side. And I actually wonder if they've designed this with the capability, and if we just pop that there, of that either being on this side or this side. But that is a super interesting design 
that DJI have there. Just taking a look at that MIPI connection in a bit more detail, whilst it looks similar to what we had on the original DJI FPV system, it is actually a larger one. The original FPV system had a 30 pin connector with 15 each side of the center, whereas this is a 40 pin connector with 20 each side, which means they're not compatible. Okay, so as you can see, we now have both boards out. So the next task is to get the cans off. And what I'm gonna do is do that, take the images, and then we'll look at them actually on the screen and walk you through what we have underneath each one. Okay, now to take a closer look at the boards in the O3A unit, we have two. I'm going to label one the process in IO board and the other the RF board because that is the way the system is very much laid out. This is the top side of the IO processing board. You can see here our MIPI connection for our camera. This is now a 40 pin connector rather than a 30 pin connector like we've seen before. We have our USB-C port for updating the firmware. We have our input port for our power and our UARTs. We have our bind button down there and there's an unused connector over here. We then have this large can area here in the middle and if I lift the lid you can see under this is very much power regulation. DJI have filled this with heat compound to get that heat out of the can into the top surface and after looking at this in more detail this is all power regulation. We've got coils, we've got a big coil here with a regulator IC, another regulator IC, all coils around here, all coils around here. There's no large IC doing anything under here, it's just all capacitance and power regulation. I didn't remove all of the heat compound but I did have a dig around just to see what was going on. I would have liked to have removed it all to give you some better images but right now I wasn't in the position to do that. But that is pretty much everything that's going on on the top side of this board. If we then flip to the bottom side, you can see here we have our SD card slot. Now, the real interesting thing, as I said about this earlier, is that they've glued it to the top of the can. A massively space-saving job. Really quite impressive to see what DJI have done with the packaging of this. And it isn't something I'd have ever have thought of myself, but it is clear that they have done everything they can to get the size down on this ear unit. And by doing that, they've been able to get get it down to the size we have. We then have a connection here. This is the connector that goes between the two PCBs with the ribbon cable. And then you can see that this goes over to here on another little connector. And then we've got our LED down there. Lifting the lid, you will find inside one of the first big changes with the o 3 ear unit, and that is the E3T, or what is known as the Eagle. This is DJI's sort of media processor that they've been using in their consumer drones. And this is what is allowing the ear unit to be able to do that 4K recording up to 100 frames a second. It's what's driving that improved image quality and the improvements that we have in the O3 system. Before, DJI was basically doing all of the processing for the image side of things on their P1 chipset and it was all very much basic. There was a DSP in the camera that was handling some of it but it was very much the case that it was the image coming in, it was being encoded, very lightly processed and pushed out onto the RF link. Whereas now we have this far more capable media processor. If we talk about what DJI used to use in the past they would have used something such as the Umbrella A9. So this is handling much of that process processing for the video side of things. We even believe DJI is actually running their flight control software on the Eagle as well in their consumer drones and it's taking all of the heavy lifting from that P1 chipset. Moving over to what I call the RF board. Now this is connected to that other PCB with that ribbon cable and this is the connection here. It's worth noting that these connections are glued in place to prevent anything coming off in flight. And then we have two cans, one located here and one located here on the bottom side. If we lift the cans, we can then see that we have our RF front end over here. We have the IE1000 chipset. This is the same RF front end chipset DJI have been using on all of their OcuSync systems for quite some time. It's the same chipset that you'll find in the ear units, the same chipset that you will find in many of their consumer drones. Then we have their two power amplifiers from Skyworks. We have some additional amplification and filtering, and then that goes off to the UFLs on the other side of the PCB.
We can then see down here that there's some more capacitance and filtering as well as regulation. We've got some diodes. There's really nothing else under here other than that power capacitance and stuff, but they have put some heat sink compound on there to help take heat away from the components that are actually on the other side of the PCB. If we flip over to the other side, you can see that it has this can again on top with this sort of foam, which is a bit weird. It's like this grid foam. I don't really know what that's about. With then heat sink compound located here in the middle. We then have an antenna connection zero and antenna one. These are our UFLs heading out to the antennas for the ear unit. Lifting the lid on this side and we find our old friend, the P1. Now, if you haven't seen my content on this in the past, I will put a link to a video for you, which gives you a bit of a history of DJI OcuSync. This was first seen in the digital FPV system that we originally had, although it did sneak in to a Mavic 2 Pro remote very early doors, but really the first proper implementation of this was in the FPV system. It is now used in pretty much all of their OcuSync systems, either this or the S1, which is a cut down version of the chipset. And this is what is handling all of the baseband, all of the encoding for the RF, and it's doing that main OcuSync processing. The real big difference between the O3 ear unit and the Vista or the DJI ear unit, for instance, is the fact that DJI have now added in that Eagle chipset. All of this is the same. So we have the P1, we have the memory. Notice the memory chip is smaller. That is because they don't need to use a combined RAM and ROM chip anymore because the E3T is handling the system processing. So they're able to reduce it to a standard SRAM chip. We have some additional voltage regulation. And then we have this large metal piece here. This is simply to conduct heat from the other side of the board where the power amplifiers are. So if you just notice there in line with that antenna, if I just skip back to here, that is actually located on the back side here of the power amplifiers. So it's actually drawing heat in through the PCB and expelling that heat out of that metal block to the cover, which is that there, and then pushing that out into the system. But as I said, the real difference between this and the Vista is this the E3T media processor, because that isn't what we had in that one. And really, the whole big difference that DJI have done with the O3 system is add an additional processor, which gives it additional capabilities. And that is what has allowed them to drive forward the image quality improvements and the additional recording modes. Okay, now just to do a bit of a quick teardown of the DJI camera. Obviously, what you have is the camera itself with a cable coming into the back here. We then have our two mounting connections and then we have a screw here that seems to hold this back cam shell on the rear of the camera module itself. So what we'll do is pop that screw out. Okay, so the screw is removed. What we're gonna do is just pull the rear shell off and what this reveals is the inside of the camera. What's interesting is actually, you can see that there's some heat compound there and that goes to a pad on the back of the camera housing. So that's going to help allow heat to transfer from the module itself. And then we've got our camera connection located there. That again is gonna be that MIPI connection, just like we've seen inside does look a little bit smaller. However, it is going to have a very similar number of pins. What we'll do is pop that off now and just take a closer look. Okay, so I've got the cable off. You can now see the back of the camera properly. What I'm going to do is just get that under the microscope. We'll take a closer look just to see how many pins there actually are compared to what we had on the other camera. Okay, now just looking at the back of the camera, moving around, nothing particularly interesting, that heat pad area there. We've then got some basic components, resistors, capacitors, and then if we go down to the connector, you can see that's along the middle. Now, something interesting is this seems to have less pins than it does ear unit side. Ear unit side has 20 on each side, i.e. 40. However, if we just count these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 on each side, that is the same number that is on the original ear unit cameras. So whilst they've got 20 on the ear unit side, they've got 15 from the looks of it on the camera side, which does potentially lead us into wondering if we could see compatibility with other cameras in the future. Again, the connector itself isn't specifically going to do that, but it is interesting that there's less pins on this side, which means I do wonder 
what the additional pins were for on the other cable side, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that. Okay, so as you've seen, it is quite impressive what DJI have done with this new ear unit. In fact, their industrial engineering is, as always, outstanding. Really, the interesting things are the design, what they've done with that SD card slot on top of the can, and just how they've been able to optimise everything to get in that new E3 processor, or the E3T, I should say, into the ear unit to give us this additional performance. Really, from my point of view, having looked at all of the boards in detail, the areas that DJI have been able to improve is power regulation. They've made it overall much smaller on the ear unit and then that has given them more space to put on that E3T chipset. If we compare that to the Vista, there is a whole side of a PCB on the Vista taken up by power and I.O. Whereas on this board, they've been able to cram that into a much smaller space and that's what's got DJI the ability to be able to pack in everything into basically what is a better system into the same package as the Vista. Now, heat on this system is going to be a major concern moving forward simply because there is just so much going on in there. Yes, you are going to be able to decase this ear unit, but as for if that's a good idea or not, only time will tell. If you take the boards out, you're obviously going to be able to mount them with the 25.5 mounting pattern, and it's going to be interesting to see how the O3A unit performs in free air without that casing. There is also something I spotted in the teardown that I went off and checked and was told is correct, and that is that DJI appear to have conformally coated the PCBs. Whilst it is not a very thick layer, there is definitely a coating on them, and DJI did mention this in some of the papers work that they gave their KOLs, so it's interesting to see that they do appear to be hinting that decasing may be a viable option. Overall, I have to say, I think DJI have done a great job with the hardware. I'm looking forward to see how it holds up over time. And if you're interested in checking out the images that I showed in this video, I will be uploading them to repair.wiki, and I will put a link to that in the comments section once it's done. If you don't know, I do upload all of the images that I take of hardware that I tear down to repair.wiki, especially around digital FPV. And if you'd like to support us in keeping doing that, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. It's only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel, and if you think we've earned it, please do consider checking it out. Finally, I'm really interested in what you think about what you've seen in this ear unit. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you have any questions, I will try and answer them as soon as I possibly can. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.